welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing the tutorial on Vogue 9345 with the bell sleeves, which this is the second one I've made and can I just say I still love it. It is so much fun. Um, it's got this really nice um, collar here. So I have done it with an accent. So I'll tell you about which pieces to do there. And it's got buttons all down the front. I really love this dress. So if you would like to see how it's made, please stay tuned. All right, so we are going to sew on my brother machine today. And I've got all the pieces pre-cut and I have pre-overlocked and interfaced all the pieces as well. And so now I won't have to get up and keep stopping the video, which I personally thought was a little bit clever. Um, if you don't have an overlocker, instead what you can do is you can zigzag the edges and you can do that as you join all the pieces. Now I'm going to start with the sleeves uh, because the sleeves are the thing you guys are all excited about. And I'm also going to fold these up as I go so that I, because I only have a little bit of space where I sit on my domestic. So, first thing we're going to do is take our sleeve and put it right sides together along the long edge. I might just move this camera back a little bit so you can kind of see everything. There we go. So we're going to go to the long edge and we're just going to sew them together. I've missed some of the tails of the overlocker, but that's okay. The sleeves are really quick to do, um, and I have already made one of these, so I know that the sleeves are the correct size for me. So I can just stitch and backstitch at the start. And I've got my stitch length set to two and a half, and I'm just on a straight normal stitch. And then I'm going to grab the second sleeve and put that right sides together as well. Like this. Now, if you're new to sewing, please feel free to put some pins in. Um, I will be using pins. I do have them off to the side here, um, but I don't need them for these simple straight lines. So now I'm going to sew the second one. And you just want to make sure that they're all lined up and chop off any leftover tails you have if you've pre-overlocked like I have. This is a good way to do it because if you've overlocked everything before you start, then we don't have to keep stopping and getting up. Uh, but you will do more overlocking because there's more edges. Me recording videos this is definitely a better option um, but if you've got your overlocker set up right next to your sewing machine uh, then just overlock as you go so if you're doing that you've stitched this now overlock it now I'm gonna take the the bell sleeve so the wide end and I'm actually gonna turn the sleeve right sides out and I'm going to hem it now because I know that it's the right size um, a good way to test if it's the right size and you're not sure is actually put your arm in it and bring it up to your underarm and then test. Um, or you can just hem it at the end. I'm just going to do it now so the sleeves are done. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I haven't overlocked this seam, I'm actually going to open it flat and then I'm just going to fold up the edge. Now I just want a little hem because I like these sleeves quite long. And so then I'm just going to put the machine, or put the, the hem underneath. So I'm stitching it wrong sides up. So the outside's here. Um, and so that way I can tuck this edge in. And I'm just going to fold it over a little bit at a time and then readjust it. I've got a thread that matches pretty close. Uh, it is Rosant Colour uh, 6366. So it's like a rose, rosy pink. So 
So I'm just lining it up as I go. Now if I had more of a table here, I could line it up more, but I don't, so I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. You can buy extended tables for this machine. I have a sneaking suspicion I have one somewhere in a box. But you can sew without it, so it's not a necessity. Don't rush out and buy a table because you think you need one. It is handy if you're doing bigger items, but it's not 100% necessary. Another thing you can get instead is um, specifically at Spotlight, I know they have them. It's tables that have a cutout so your machine will actually sit down so this sits flush with the top of the table. Uh, much like my industrial machine, actually. And I don't know about others, but the one at Spotlight actually um, folds down flat so you can store it under your bed when you're not using it. I don't know how much they are. I haven't worked there in a while, but I do know that they exist. Or if you've got a handy partner, you could get them to make one. So that's one hemmed. So I'm just going to fold that and shove it over there. And then I'm going to hem the second one. So I'm going to start at the seam because I want to hold that open flat. So I just like to start there. It's also easy to hide your back stitching. If you're right on a seam, it's less noticeable. I have found personally, uh, but don't think you have to start there, you can kind of start from anywhere. But it also means that the join's going to be underneath your arm. Uh, so if you don't line it up perfectly, you're not going to see it. And others aren't going to see it when they're standing in front of you. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting this finger in the crease and I'm using these two fingers to kind of fold it over so I get a continuous flow. Now it doesn't always work out, um, but it helps that I've got the fake nails. This is why I get these things. Because they are not helpful in any other part of my life except sewing. So then I'm just going to stop. I'm going to roll this over so that it's not going to pull while I'm trying to sew. You'll get used to doing that, um, but if you, if that, if doing that terrifies you, what you can do instead is pin it, or you could even iron it. So you could go to the iron and iron up your hem, and then it will stay there while you're stitching. I've trimmed off all my edges, um, and you can barely see the join. Or I stopped and started my stitches. That is obviously you can see the seam. So that's the sleeves done. So we now won't th need them till pretty much the end. Now we're gonna move on to, let's see what I can find. So bodice back. I've got all of mine clipped with an alligator clip, much like I do um, bag sewing patterns because they're just handy. So I'm about to make a pile of them. We also need our back piece, which should have been cut on the fold if I can find it. You know what, I'll go with the front piece because I found that. So the front piece has, and I forgot to grab my pen, we've got to do some darts. So the side, the side darts here. So what we need to do is on the back, so that's the back, we're going to transfer the mar markings. So let me just grab a pen and we'll All mark right. it. So I'm using a red friction texture uh, pen. You can get these from supermarkets or office supply stores or wherever. So I'm just going to mark the two parts where it um, reaches the edge. And then I'm just going to fold this back to mark the circle point. Now, I don't draw a circle. Instead, I, cro I draw an X because X marks the spot. Who doesn't love being a pirate and using pirate terms, really? So I'm going to put the cross there as well and then just mark where these all line up like so uh, we will need this later for your button markings or placement 
so I won't stick that totally away. Now, if you're new to sewing, you can take a ruler, I'm going to use my foot, and you can actually rule from the point to the edges like this. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So if you want to, you can actually draw it on like this. And then to match it up, you put a pin in at one line and then out at the other so that they're sitting across flat like this. And then I'm going to put several of those pins in. So this is just one way to match them up. I'll show you two ways because there's two darts. So you just put your pins in one hole and out the other, still so they're sitting pretty flat. So that's probably enough like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch where the cross is and then kind of push these together. And what that does is that perfect, perfectly lines up the dart and then I'm just going to push the pin and stick it back in like that. So now if I sew along that line there, it's going to match up perfectly with the behind line. So needle down or oh, foot down, pedal down, pedal on, foot down, pedal on. We're going to stitch and we're going to back stitch to lock that in. And then we're going to slowly sew along the line. And we're going to sew all the way off and we're going to leave a tail. Pull out your pins because they'll be in the way. And then we're just going to tie a double knot to finish this off. And this will stop it being weirdly pointy. This is the correct way to do darts, but lots of people just backstitch. I'm going to do three knots like that and then trim off the tails and throw them in the bin. My bin is just off camera. I promise they're not on the floor today. And so that is now my dart. Another way you can do it, which is how I usually do it, is I put my fingernails at each marking and then just push them and hold them together like this. And I kind of pinch there. And then I'm going to grab the point and manipulate the fabric until it's flat. like that and so then I can just come in here and stitch and back stitch and I'm just aiming in a straight line to the cross and then you can pull it out trim off this end tail and then again I'm going to tie the knots so don't tie knots in one and back stitch in the other be consistent with that. One, two, and three. And if you're new to sewing, it's worth drawing the lines and doing the pins because it didn't take that much longer. And so then there's my other dart. So now that we've got our fronts, we're going to take our side front, which looks like our side back, which is half the reason I've been pinning all of the pins or all of the pattern pieces to the fabric because that is bodice front and that is bodice back. So there is a slight difference in that there's more of a curve, but if you don't remember that, it's much easier to just pin the pieces to the fabric. And so now we're going to take this and we're going to sew this along this edge. So we put right sides together And I like to start at the bottom, personally. And then we can just put some pins in. Now, you don't have to pin if you don't want to. You also want to make sure that your dart is facing down. And you'll find that the way that they draw it, it should sit perfectly in your seam. I'm just going to put some pins in. I'm going to put one right at the dart to make sure it holds in place. So I'm going through all the layers there. And then as we get to the curve, you're going to have to lift it so that it fits. So we're actually going to bring them together like this. Otherwise, they won't fit. So 
This looks much smaller than my first one. What happened here? It'll be fine. All right, so then I'm going to grab my second one. So we're attaching this to the side where the dart is because that's the outer side. So again, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to pin. And then I'm going to get here and I'm going to make sure that that sits down and then pin it in place. And then this is where it starts to get curvy. So you just want to pin, you, you'll find you'll want to put more pins in a curve, which is fine. Because the whole point of this is, is that it's not a flat thing. It's giving our body some shape. So now we're just going to stitch that down. So I always like to start from the bottom, but you can start from the top if you prefer. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And then sometimes I pull the pins out, sometimes I don't. So now we've got our front up here, and this is kind of our colory bit. Stitch, back stitch. So when patterns are written, I find that they always do front to back, top to bottom. So they're starting right now with the front piece and then they'll work around we'll do our back and then we build the whole top and then we'll build the bottom. It's just a pattern I've noticed. Trim that off, pull out your pins. Sometimes I don't like pins as much because sometimes it creates a pinch. Uh, so you always just want to check and make sure that it's fine but they're fine okay so i'm going to put side fronts to the side and then i'm going to take my back piece which you should have cut on the fold so you should just have this weird shaped piece like this make sure you've got it right way up this fabric's actually quite hard to tell sometimes. It looks very similar on both sides. I have a bad habit of picking those fabrics. All right, and then we're gonna take a bodice uh, side back. So this is bodice back, this is bodice side back. And we're gonna do the same thing again, where we're gonna put them across here, like this. So I'm gonna start from the bottom this time I'm not going to pin. I also apologise if you can hear random banging. Uh, they're doing bombing practice again. Normally I just ran it out with music. It's not really an option today. So that's one, and then I'm still gonna go from the bottom. I just turn the whole lot over and go from here. Now, if I wasn't, um, if I hadn't pre-overlocked, after each of, like after I've stitched both of these, I would then go and overlock them together. Because this dress doesn't actually have a lining. Uh, so you will see all of this when you open the dress. So now we've got this. So we're going to take just one of our yolks. So we're not using both the yolks. Usually I do like a burrito sandwich. We're not doing that. The first one I made, I just went, oh, I can make this without the pattern and I stuffed it up. So don't do that. So we're going to take this edge here and put it right sides together along the top like this and then we're going to stitch 
across there. Now again, if you need to put in some pins, there's no harm in doing pins. I've got a thread stuck here around the foot. It won't harm to chop it, so I am. side it's fantastic like this now, if I had a thought about it I could have done this in the accent fabric too but I've only just thought of it now and it's too late okay so with the second yoke piece we are going to fold up the the overlocked raw edge so we're gonna fold it up now if you're not overlocking you could do a double fold uh, but we are going to fold this up and just top stitch it down like this. those tails all right and so now we can put this piece aside but we are going to take our back and our front pieces so I always like to put the back right sides up and then take my front pieces and put them right sides down and join it at the shoulder up here so you can throw some pins into that because I'm going to chain stitch one after the other. So by putting the pins, it's going to hold it perfectly in place until I get to the second one. Like this. And then I'm going to take this one. Like this. Always right sides together. Um, and I've actually used purple, like a lilac overlocking thread, because you don't have to match it perfectly. People get caught up on matching perfectly. Um, the purple is close enough that from a distance you can't tell. If I get really, really close, you can see that it is purple and not pink, but it's not going to affect the look of the dress, except to you who looks at it before you put it on. Uh, beyond that, it doesn't matter. So I just used purple, it was close enough. I could have also used a pale blue or a pink. Could have even done cream if you really wanted to. So I'm stitching across there and then I'm gonna pull out the pins. And then I'm gonna grab this other one and just kind of push it up under here and stitch the second one. This is called chain stitching and I love it. Backstitch. We always backstitch at the start and the end. Otherwise, it's all going to come apart. It's a waste of your day. So now, this is what we've got. It looks weird, but just bear with us. Right, on to our collar. So I have got an accent colour on the collar, which you would have seen at the start of this video, but I'm explaining to you because we're not there yet. So I'm going to put right sides together. So I've got interfacing on the back of one of the pieces to make it a little bit stiffer. You can put it on both, but I decided that that would make it too stiff because this fabric is already quite stiff. So we want to pin it together so it doesn't move around with right sides together. And I'm going to have this accent color on the outside because I think that's going to look super cool. So I'm just moving along and pinning it all together. Now it looks like I have over overlocked, but that's okay. This is why we pin it. So I've obviously shaved a little bit too much off when I was overlocking. And when I say a little bit, I mean like the width of the overlocker, which is still going to be fine. 
the bottom bit doesn't matter as much because we leave that open but we do need to do these curves on both sides so I am going to lay it flat and pin it like this now and like this now there is a mark on the pattern to show you where to start and stop I didn't put it on here I learned my lesson the hard way in the first one I had to go back and stitch a little bit more so basically we want to come down to the end of the curve and we're going to stitch and we're going to back stitch now I'm using the outside bigger piece as the guide for my seam allowance because that one is the correct size and it's not going to harm me stitching closer to the other piece so like that and then we're going to needle down and pivot around you always have your needle down and then you can't lose your position now's a really good time to get up and you know phone call or drink or anything as long as your needle's down you're fine i slow down over pins hurt my machine to do that so it's worth not snapping a pin I always tend to pull the pins out before I turn so that I don't accidentally stab myself because I also have a bad habit of doing that and then when we get to the end we backstitch pulling it out trim off our tails like that and then we're going to turn this through. Now I actually think I need to trim off some of this. Now that's not going to matter because it's tucked inside. So even though I've overlocked it, it's okay. It's safer to overlock than not overlock. And just chop off the very, very point so that when I turn it, it's going to become pointier. And I'm just going to use my pen to push out those ends. Lots of people also like to use a chopstick. Um, I actually have a turning thing that is a flute cleaning rod. But it's over at the other machine. So I'm just pushing out those corners like that. And then what I want to do is I want to come down here and I'm going to base this together. Uh, because all of this is going in a seam allowance in a second. But it's easier to have less pieces because we're about to jam a lot of stuff together. So I like to baste where possible. And I am just basting on the overlocking. So it's like quite close to the edge. So now at least it's closed. Don't worry about how this sits. We don't top stitch it, so I'll just iron it in place later. Uh, so it's not a big deal that this is sitting like that. You can actually just ignore it. So, now we're going to take uh, the main everything that we've stitched so far. And I'm going to find the center of my collar. So I just put the points together, pinch it. And you can either put a pin or clip it. I'm going to clip it like that. And then I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to go from shoulder seam to shoulder seam, fold it in half. And technically I've already got a crease there, but you could also just put a pin if you don't want to clip it. If you have overlocks like me, just put a pin and then we're going to match them up. So I want this to sit like this. So that's how I'm going to put it. And so then I'm going to, from the center, I'm going to work my way out and pin the collar in place. And this is one of those few times we are going to, I am definitely going to pin. I will always pin this because we're going to add another piece in a second. Uh, so I'm now up to this seam. Because I've overlocked it, I'm going to open it out flat and put one pin in each half 
to make sure that it sits in place like so. And then I'm going to come the other way and do exactly the same thing. I'll just move over so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pinning all the way across. And then again, we're going to open out this seam here. Because if we open all the seams out flat, you'll have less bulk. If you have overlocked them, just swish them to one side. That's also fine. So this is now what I've got. So the idea is, is that this is going to go on. But before we attach this, we need our facing piece, which for me, I have also used the decorative um, fabric. So this is um, one of those Jocelyn Proust prints, I believe. So this is your bodice front facing. So I have interfaced these. And again, put my piece over there. Um, so when the, the collar hangs open, this is going to have like a nice accent here. So my blue dress, I did all in blue. And then I decided I didn't want two dresses identically the same. So this one's pink in the same kind of dirty color, but I put the accent that matched really well. And that was a scrap in my house, which worked out even better. All right, so I'm going to lay this one right sides up. So the reason we know that is because we've already tucked under that raw edge. And then this is the center and we want to sew this to the inside half. Now this goes across further, so don't think, oh my god, I've stuffed it up. It's meant to be like that. So we're just gonna, we're, the idea is, is we want a perfect neckline section. And this is another reason why this helps to overlock first. So then again, I'm going to bring this up here and pin it in place. So it goes approximately halfway across. So then if you let go, you can see that we're going to have another glorious neckline. This bit is longer so that it can be caught when we sew our sleeve in so that it doesn't flop around inside the dress. So that's why they've done it. If anybody needed to know that to help better understand why they did it like this. So I'm just going to sew the bit where the facing is. We don't need to sew all the way across, that's not a big deal. And then I'm going to backstitch and I'm going to grab the second half and squish it up and then continue sewing because it's quicker. If, if that hurts your brain to think about doing that, you don't have to chain sew. Just sew one, pull it out, check it, and then do your other side. Won't harm it. Just means you've got a little bit, like a few more tails to trim each time. So now when we open this, you should have a beautiful neckline, which is the same neckline as over here. So now we're going to take, I'm going to have this one right sides up. And then I'm going to put this one right sides down. And you should be able to grab those corners and it's going to line up like this. So I'm going to pin the corner because if you've done all your seams correctly, everything should match. So I, I always like to pin the corners because that's holding it officially in place there. And then we can just come down and your seam should also line up. If they don't, uh, you can just open either sew one slightly tighter or slightly looser, depending on what you need there. So there's my seam. I'm going to open it. I'm going to grab these pins out and repin that whole section. So this is why I like to pin these open. If you have overlocked them, pin one one way and one the other so that it's going to help that seam sit flatter. Don't have them all facing one way. It'll get too thick. I'm just opening mine because they've been pre-overlocked. Another reason why I only um, interface one side of the collar is because there is now quite a lot of bulk here. Um, 
So by only over, uh, only interfacing one side, it's helped reduce bulk while still giving the collar some stiffness. So I'm actually just picking random pins and I'm pulling them out one at a time and then just adding in that extra layer. I find this way easier. You could have also basted the collar in place, um, but this is working fine for me. So there's that. Now I just have this last little bit here. Since I'm pinning, if I commit to pinning, I do all the pinning. And then this will also, it should match up down the bottom here. So we, we're going to sew all of this in one go. So we're going to go up, across and down. So again, I'm just going to add pins. I probably don't really need to pin this because there's no, there's no fighting of anything, but I'm going to do it anyway because I started now and I can't half pin things. I'm really going to like this dress. It's a good winter dress because I've picked a heavyweight fabric. This is a polyester, but it's a linen look polyester, so it's quite heavy. Uh, the other dress is quite heavy as well, but it's a good winter dress. I'm just going to wear it with some tights. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to have facing side up so I can see what's going on. We're going to stitch and back stitch. Now, I don't want to be going 100 miles an hour, especially at the top where all the layers are, because I don't feel like snapping a needle. There's all right. There's nothing much going on there. Needle down. Foot up and pivot. Okay, so this is where I'm about to start getting into the bulk. So I'm going to go quite slowly over the whole lot because, again, thick fabric, interfacing, pins, you name it, it's in here. And that wasn't so bad. Actually, it anticipated a lot more resistance. I'm also making sure that the underneath part is not getting in my way. You can hear the layers with how much it's kind of trying to stab through it. If you find your uh, needle is skipping stitches, it means that your needle is old and it's time for a new one. For anyone that doesn't know this, random fact, you should do about nine hours of sewing on a needle and then throw it away. Don't wait until it breaks because it can mess up the timing in the inside of your machine. And it's not worth it for like the 30 cents a needle costs because a service is like a hundred dollars. Slowly over the bulky area. Needle down. And again, I'm going to remove these pins so that I don't stab myself. And you'd be surprised how simple it is to stab yourself with pins that aren't even in the way. I could have just grabbed like that and then would have stabbed my palm. So the hard part of the dress is actually over. And I've lost my snips. That's annoying. I think I knocked them on the floor. So now, this is what I get. So this is my collar. And then this will be my facing. So I get this fun little print at the top. Right. So now that all that's done, we're going to take our armhole and just create an actual armhole and stitch the sides together. So it'll be side front and side back that we're stitching together now. And this should be... I don't need to pin this because the curve is the same on both pieces. Backstitch. I will have to find.
on my snips in a minute because I don't want tails. And then we're going to do the same to the other sides. You want to make oh, look, more tails. Tails everywhere, people. So I'm going to go from here to here, create an armhole. Like this. And this side seam will actually match up with the seams on the skirt so that you get nice flowing lines. Trim there and there. And so now technically if you wanted to, you can put it on. And you'll get you'll get it on. I won't get it over these clothing. The rayon's gonna fight me. Uh, so this actually, this piece here will tuck under like this and then you'll notice that it reaches. So that, that extra piece of the yoke will actually reach to match up here. So that bit will now be sewn into, so that whole piece there will be sewn into the sleeve. Uh, you can baste it down. Actually, I can baste it now while I'm here. Uh, and that way it holds it flat. Don't misbehave, Thread. I saw that. So you don't have to base it now. You could do it later. Uh, but I touched it. So now that I've touched it, I have to do it. So then again, the same with the other ones. You just push your hand through and you'll feel it. It's the loose bit of fabric underneath and then you can just bring it to here and again baste it in like that. Now I won't be putting the sleeves in yet because they're heavy um, and so I like to put them in after I've done everything else. I always put my sleeves in last so that they don't get in the way of stitching and to reduce the heaviness of the garment. If you really, really wanted to, and you wanted to feel super accomplished, you could put them in now. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt, it's just heavy. So see, in the inside, we've now got this. I know it doesn't look terribly exciting, but it hasn't been ironed. So you've got kind of this flap here. If you wanted to, you could probably um, attach it to there and top stitch it down. I'm going to just let mine float. My other one floats and it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, skirt pieces. You should have two skirt backs like this. And then you should have two skirt fronts. So I'm going to take the skirt back. And I'm going to fold this piece up neatly because I like to be neat as I go. I've got a little pile and then that pile will go in a Ziploc bag and then that's where it will live. And I've already got them right sides together, which apparently I was clever enough to remember to do that. So I'm going to stitch the back seam first. The back stitch, I've got all these tails that are coming up through the foot and I don't want that. I want them to go back. Let me grab my snips. You can also just snip them. So otherwise they get caught in the foot. Now make sure you keep your fingers out of the way if you're not going to pin. Now I'm not actually pulling on this. The feed dogs are doing all the work. Since I don't have a table to lean on, I have to grab it because my hand has to do something. And then we're going to back stitch. Like that. And the top end. So I'm going to open it out with right sides up. And then I'm going to grab some skirt front pieces. Now again, we're going to need this piece later because it's got all of the button markings. And I don't transfer them now in case they come off. So that's the front. We'll put that with the other one. So this is the front. So we want to sew this back piece, making sure that the fabric is right sides out. So like this. So I'm going to join it to this side. It, oh, 
it's kind of obvious which way it goes. You want the big part at the bottom. Um, I have once sewn it on upside down because I was not paying attention. It was back when I first learnt to sew. I was overwhelmed by all the pattern pieces and I literally sewed it upside down. And then I wondered why the other side didn't look right. This, mach this needle sounds like it's nearly done. So this will be my nine hours, this dress. I will change the needle after this. Another way to look at it is every weekend, if you do a whole weekend of sewing, every weekend you've sewn, then stop go again all right so that's now my nice straight edge that's my center so we're going to take this piece and you can see one looks straight and one looks curved now it will also help if you use a fabric that looks like it has a front and a back I did think about adding this fabric all over the skirt, so I was going to make like the bottom half of this skirt that fabric, uh, but I decided that it's probably too advanced for today at least, because I'd have to cut curves and it's all just it's all just a bit much. This will still look nice with a subtle bit. I did also think about using some binding around the sleeves instead, but this print in my opinion, is too large and you wouldn't really get the effect that I was after, so I just didn't bother. And backstitch. Lift up the foot. By the way, I am still knee lifting under here because it's a habit from my other machine. Okay, so now we've just got a skirt basically. So we now need to add our facings to the skirt. I have opted to continue this down. Um, you won't really see these, so it's not a big deal if you don't want to. But I did because I don't know consistency is key and it'll be like a subtle thing that I know about so this will be like behind where the buttons go nobody will see it you could have used anything you wanted I actually could have just made it this same fabric but I didn't want to so I have interfaced this with a medium woven as well going to give stability to the buttonholes and help this to sit correctly. So that's one. And then we'll come and do the other one. And after this, you should be down to two pieces. You should have your top half and your bottom half after this. And then it's just a matter of joining it at the hip, hemming it, and adding buttons. We're going pretty well. A whole dress in like, what, an hour so far? So we'll say two hours if it takes me time to do all the buttons. speed of a domestic anymore this is still pretty fast but i just the other one goes faster all right so from the top 
this is what we've got. It looks quite wide, but you've got to remember that this bit gets tucked behind, so it's not technically part of your waist. So that's that, and then it should be wider and kind of flowy at the bottom. So we're going to take this, and we're going to open these out, and we're literally going to join it from edge to edge. Now I'm going to open out all of these seams nice and flat. Oh, sorry, I lied. You should have four pieces because I forgot about our sleeves. Can't ah, forget about the sleeves. This do, this pattern does come with like normal non-bell sleeves, but where's the fun in that? It also comes with short sleeves, so you could make this out of a rayon and have like a flowy summer dress. That would also be very cool. So then again, we're going to come and we're going to match up all of the seams. Now the top half has extra seams because of the side back and side front, um, but that's not where we're trying to mesh it to. And the top, or well, the bottom half, sorry, will have a back center, like a center back. You can find where it is. Mine has a crease, so I know where that is. So I'm going to pin it there. Like that. And then I'm going to come across to the side seam. So this will be where our armhole is. And we're going to pin that. Now you'll notice I'm just kind of pinning where the seams are. I'm using two pins to hold the seam allowance where I want it. So again, if you've overlocked it, just put them in opposite directions. But you need to make sure that it's the same as whatever you've done up the top. And then again, we're going to do it here. Like this. Open it out flat. Or put them each side so that it's sitting flat. The, the name of the game is to have as little bulk there as possible. And then, as you want to. So again, I'm going to open out this seam. So I'm going to come back now and do all of the side front and side back seams. Like that. And then this one. Mainly so it holds open the seam allowance. Now I'm just going to stop for a drink break. Water break or coke break achieved. I also knocked that. And I've also finished pinning all of the seams open. So now I'm just going to start at one end. I'm going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch. And then off we go. You're just going to sew all of these together. Now you can add more um, pins than I have. By all means, have more pins if you need them. Because the idea is, is we want this to match up. So... It is in fact the end goal here. And every time I stop, I'm going to pull out my pins. Trim off that tail as well while I'm at it. I just want to make sure I'm not sewing this into it because it keeps getting kind of caught. Slowly over the bigger seams. And I can tell the bigger seams because I can see them from the top. Whereas the... the side front and side back seams aren't as big. So again, slowly. Slowly over all of it, really. You don't have to pull out your pins now. You can definitely do it later. I just like to do it now. Because I'm going to stab myself in the hand. I know what I'm like. That needed a little bit of pulling through. And backstitch. You only need to do a couple of back stitches. Whoops. Pull out the last of the pins. 
and any seams and then we're going to open it and make sure that everything is lining up because uh, that's kind of the point you want everything to be beautiful and neat and tidy so that is my waist done so now technically i have like a a sleeveless kind of coat thing so i'm gonna come up here and poke that out which is the facing like that and then we're gonna come down to the bottom and i'm gonna fold that over like this and i might actually want to go and iron this so what i will what i will do is i will go and iron this whole piece down flat on both sides and so go all the way up and i'll also iron my collar so i don't have to do it later and i don't have to turn the iron back on and so i want to make sure that this is over but you want like one mil one millimeter like the tiniest fraction i don't know 132 of the outside showing so that we won't see this on the other side so we want to we want to basically sew that either right on the edge or just like a smidgen off so from the outside you won't see the fabric you just want to have it like just off the edge and we're going to iron that all the way down because it's easier to iron it and i'm also going to iron my collar i'll roll all those bits out now pull it all out make it sit nice and iron that as well and then we can hem the bottom but we can't hem the bottom until we iron all of this in place so i have ironed the two sides and i used steam so that it's going to sit right where i need it to uh, and then i'm just going to ignore the top half and we're going to go straight to the bottom and i'm going to hem it so what i'm going to do is i've got the facing folded back and then i'm just going to fold this up the hem allowance uh, which i believe is five eighths of an inch um i'm pretty sure that's what it said so i'm actually not going to i'm not going to pin all of it but i am going to pin the start and the end where the facing is because i want to make sure that that's going to sit really nicely now if you haven't overlocked or surged or however you call it if you haven't done that what you're going to want to do is you can double fold it so you can fold it up three eighths or not three eighths what's half of five eighths i don't know but you can fold it up and up again like a rolled hem so that you won't have any raw edges showing i have just overlooked so i'm, I'm okay with seeing the raw edge because nobody's really going to look anyway but i'm just going to pin over the um accent at the bottom so when the skirt kind of lifts up this is what you'll see along the bottom if it lifts up i've got the interfacing in there so i reckon it'll be fine but you never know so i'm going to stitch it with the the wrong side facing up so that i can see what's going on there i could have also ironed that in place um when i was ironing the other bit but you wanted to iron this first to make sure that this edge is nice and crisp because you don't want it to not be cool so i'm just going to stitch and back stitch and then stitch again you don't want to do too many stitches or back stitches sorry and this bit's also thicker because it's got the facing and the interfacing under there and so then i'm just going to work my way along you need to remember it is a curve so you're just going to do it in sections to split open the the seam allowance here and then i'm going to hold that in place i could have also pinned that probably would have been smart too late now so i'm just using my fingers as the pins and working around this whole bottom edge so from the outside it's going to look lovely it'll still need an iron after this uh, but i can do that at the very very end it'll be fine i 
I'm also making sure that I'm moving the weight with the, the dress because it is heavy and I don't want it to full, like pull on it. Like, that'll make it harder to do it. Okay, and now I'm getting close to this next seam, so I'm going to open that. So this should be the center back seam, so I'm about halfway. like to stop with the needle down and then again you can see I am bringing it back around I'm gonna hold that next seam allowance there but again you could also pin it if you wanted to I've just done this enough now that I can kind of eyeball an even line I can't do it at every length but I can do it at this one It's just practice. So now that I'm getting back to here, I'm going to slow down. And when I get to the end, I'm going to back. will sit even nicer but that's like a nice curve round hem so now we are up to you can see because I've ironed it this facing and now that we've tacked it at the bottom with that stitching it's now sitting back the way it's supposed to and then this will be like the collar accent so we are up to our sleeves I'm gonna sew the sleeves in and then we're gonna switch over to the buttonhole foot and I'll do a couple of buttons on camera I won't do them all because there's like seven or nine or something excessive. So, before I do anything, I'm going to find the seam allowance here and I'm going to fold it up in half and then I'm going to put a pin where the halfway point is. Now, I don't use a lot of pins when I'm doing um, sleeves, but I, I'm going to pin that and I'm going to do the same to this one. So, again, Find the halfway point, match up all the edges like this, and then put a pin in. Now, normally I would clip that, but because I've overlocked it, I don't want it to come undone. And then I'm going to do the same to the armhole. So I'm going to go to the bottom center, and then I'm just going to come up like this and put a pin. We're halfway. It's I'm all about the halfway point. You also need to cut any uh, leftover tails that you have. And generally speaking, I personally have found that my front and back um, side, or side front and side back, tend to match up. So they're equally as high. But that's just what I found. It may not be correct. Who knows? All right, so we're just gonna take one sleeve. And I'm going to take right sides here at the bottom with the seam allowance on the sleeve and we're gonna put them together. And I'm gonna pin these with two pins so that it's gonna sit perfectly on the seam and it's gonna hold all of those seam allowances right where I want them. We're gonna go one, and two like that then i'm going to flick this over so that the dress is technically inside out and i'm going to come and i'm going to pin this top center top with the center top but i'm only going to have one pin so i'll take the other one out in a second like that so that is center top and center bottom and it's going to look like it doesn't fit that's okay it does i promise so, let me get my foot right. I'm going to start at the double pins at the bottom. 
I always start at the bottom. And I'm going to start just off the pins. Put my needle down and hold it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my fingers and I'm going to basically curve them like this. Holding the fabric against each other. So we're going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to go slowly over the pins. Like that. And then I'm going to stop and I'm going to twist this and then reposition my fingers so that they are all the way around. Now, if you didn't baste your shoulder yoke piece in, you should probably do that right before this or now because I'm not quite up to it. Or you could pin it. If you're going to pin your sleeve in, you should pin it. Now I'm going to take the pin out so it doesn't create like a pinch because that's obviously not what I want. And I'm going to take these bottom pins out just so I don't stab myself. It has been known to happen a lot. And then again, I'm going to hold this and you can see that I'm lifting it up because it's a 3D object. I'm treating it as such and feeding it into the machine. And then I'm going to twist it again. And by doing this, I don't have any excess or leftover fabric. Like, it is all gone. We're going to get back to the start, and then we're going to backstitch. Lift up the needle and pull it out. Then you want to check it. First thing you want to do is check to make sure that there are no pinches around the seam that you just sewed. Which there are not. And so now, technically, you have a sleeve, which is fabulous and ginormous. So now we're going to do exactly the same to the second one. I've already got my pins in, so I'm going to split this open. Now, if you've overlocked this, push it to the opposite side of the sleeve and make sure that whatever you did here is doing the same at this end, because that is important. So I'm going to put right sides to right sides. I'm going to open these out because I've overlocked them, or you'd push them opposite. Whatever suits the situation that you're in. I do kind of like that I pre-overlocked everything. It means I will never forget to do a section. It's very clever. All right, and then I'm going to take the center and the center, line them up, and pin it. Like that. So that I've got three pins in it. I find that if I put too many pins, I don't get the nice curve that I'm attempting. I have found, obviously with practice, because everything's practice, but I actually find that I can do it easier with only the three pins. Or sometimes I only put two pins at the bottom. It depends on how I've made the garment, I guess. So we're going to needle down. I'm going to bring back my foot pedal that I just kicked out of the way. I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to pull that pin out. And I'm going to go over that one. I'm going to needle down and pull that pin out. So now I'm going to have the weight evenly distributed on the table. And then I'm going to use my fingers spread out to hold the sleeve in place. of the the yolk that's in that layer so needle down and now I'm going to literally twist it around trim off those tails as I see them I usually have to go over the whole thing when I'm finished and trim off any tails I forgot it does happen especially when I'm trying to teach I guess sidetracked all right so again we're gonna line it up and do the other half Twist it once more. Now I'm 
patting that, so I need to move it. I can feel it pulling on my fabric, and that's not what I want. Backstitch and pull it out. Check it, because if there's any pinches anywhere, we need to go back and fix them. But I'm good. All right. So there is that. You could actually, if you made this a size or two bigger, you could actually make it as a coat. I was thinking this. All right. Next up is placement of the buttonholes. Now, they go on, I always forget which side they go on. I know that's ridiculous. So the buttonholes are going on this side because men and women do different and because I keep making my shirts and then hubby shirts I always forget which side so I just take the diagram that comes with the pattern and I just copy it so buttons are on this side which is fine so I'm going to take the top half because we've got two buttons on the top half now you need to remember that you have taken seam allowances from everywhere it's very important to remember. So, basically, you need to sit it up a little bit like this. And then I'm going to take my erasable pen and I'm going to draw the lines on. You could also do this in Chaco pen. But that is those two. So you just need to make sure that there's even amount at top and bottom um, and then over a little bit. And so that's the top ones marked. And then we're going to do the same to the skirt. So the skirt's got quite a lot. I think the skirt's got five from memory. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So they go pretty much all the way down. There's only like a little bit. But that will mean that it's less likely to move, which I don't think personally is a bad thing. So again, we line it up like this. And then I'm just going to draw where the lines are. And this is how I do it. Now, I could have probably done this earlier, um, but if you're using erasable texture, some of them are air dry, so it will go away. So if this is a project you're going to do over several days, like me, do them at the end. Um, also, with the chalk, I was going to do them earlier with the chalk, but I would most likely have rubbed most of it off by now, which means I would have had to do this again anyway. So I'm just kind of saving myself some time. All right, so we're going to drop out this foot. And we're going to put our buttonhole foot. Now, I don't know if you guys have used one of these before, but if not, let me introduce you. So this is a mechanical machine, but it does have a one-step buttonhole foot. So these are the buttons I've decided to use. They're like a deep burgundy because I thought that'd be cool. Uh, so I'm just going to take one out for now. So the back of this foot moves. I don't know if you can see that. This bit here moves, allowing a big gap at the back here. So what you want to do is you want to take your button and you put your button in the back and clamp it in like this. So now this is set for the perfect size buttonhole for your button that you've put in there. So that's why it's adjustable. So now I've got my button in. I'm going to stick it under the machine and clamp it on. So I personally just go up and down. Like that, down and up. Now on my machine, there's this little thing here. Let me bring it back front and center. So you pull this down, and then you've got to go to the buttonhole settings. So for mine, it's on um, number one, and then up the top here, I mean, you probably can't see it. You can't see it. Up the top, on the stitch length, I have to put it to F. I don't know what F stands for before you ask me. No idea. Um, and I've got my zigzag set to two and a half. I might turn it up to three. Uh, the bigger the zigzag, the wider the stitches for your um, buttonhole. So I'm going to set it to three. And then to do this one on the mechanical, I have to push that back and you hear it click. So now... You're probably not going to be able to see most of this. I need to bring this around because it's going to go backwards. So I need to bring the fabric in this way. I'm going to line it up with my buttonhole. 
wherever that line is. Where's the line? There's the line. And then put my foot down. Now, I'm just going to put my foot down and it will move. So I don't know if you can see that, but that is currently moving. And it'll hit the back one and then it comes back the other way. Uh, so you don't have to hold it. But I get really paranoid it's not it's gonna like veer off or stop moving. So I always keep my hands on it. And then you just trim off all of those tails. And I've used a really good matching thread. There's the buttonhole. So from a distance, you can't even see it, which is kind of cool. So now to do another one, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to slot it in from the back, line it up with my markings, push this back again. So every time you start a new buttonhole, you have to push that again. And then off we go. lift the needle up. Now my embroidery machine actually doubles as a sewing machine. So when I can be bothered, and I don't do it often, it's got like fancy shaped buttonholes um, and I can set it up and you just hit the go button and it'll stitch the whole buttonhole for you. But this works, this is ultimately quicker for me because it takes less time to set up. So I'm getting, so in between my foot there's like red arrows. I'm lining all that up Push that back, I've already done it, and off we go again. So I'm just going to continue on with that, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the last button that I stitch on, and then the dress will be done. I thought I should probably teach you the steps in between from there to buttonholes. So I take my craft knife and I'm going to have the blade pointing away from me, very important, and I'm going to kind of hold it in my fingers like this so that there's nothing behind where I'm about to stab this through. And I'm going to start the blade at the front end of the buttonhole and I'm going to slowly push down and we're going very slowly so that we don't cut the end. And then we're just going to get all the way to those end stitches and stop like that. And this is how I open my buttonholes. Now, if, you, if you're really worried you're going to stab it, what you can do is you can do half of it with a craft knife and then grab your snips and snip the rest. Um, but I actually find I personally have more success with the craft knife, but only if the blade is away from you. If you try and do it towards you, it's dangerous. You should never do that anyway. Uh, but I also find that I'm more likely to cut the stitches. So I'm not pushing hard because I'm not in a hurry. I'm going very slowly so as not to cut those end stitches. But you do have to get right up next to them because that's how the buttonhole was designed. So it doesn't take long, but you just want to make sure that you're going nice and slowly. Like that. And then there's one more. Now, I think I did the shorter length. But this is still quite long, like it's not up to my thigh or anything. It's still a nice length. I do also want to make the, the long one that goes all the way to the floor. I think that would be really nice as like a maxi looking dress for summer out of rayon. Uh, but we'll get to that. Okay, so now I need to mark where the buttonholes are going to go. So I'm going to lay this across like that. So this is the one where the buttonholes will be. And I'm going to take this one and lay it over the top. And you want to overlap about the same amount. So about there, I think. Like that. I'm going to line up the bottom because obviously that's important. You don't want the bottom of your dress to look like this. And you also need to make sure that the waist lines up. So here I've got a perfect shot at the waist and the bottom's lined up as well. So you can just kind of pull it and shake it like this making sure that this hand is holding that in place. Shake it so it sits flat. Make sure that it's actually sitting where you want. That was not it. Uh, you can add pins if it's not doing as, you're, as you want. Like that. And I want to be about... I don't want to be too far over. And then I'm just going to take 
my friction pen, or you can take a Chaco pen, and I'm just going to scribble right in the middle of the zipper hole. There, and in there. So I've done the bottom half with the skirt. We've still got to do two at the top as well. So again, I'm going to line that up, scribble, and scribble. So this is just giving me a point where the button goes. And then from there, it's my job to make sure that they're evenly away from the end. So the easiest way to do that is to grab a ruler and make a cross because I love crosses. So let me just get a ruler because I forgot to get one. Giant oversized one all day. And so then I'm going to put mine one inch from the edge, it would appear. So you just want to go up, you don't need a rule this big, by the way. There's that other one. Like that. And then there's two up here as well. probably should have done three quarters of an inch if we're totally honest I might go back and fix that I think one inch might be a bit far over it's all right I'll know it's the closer one so this is how I'm going to line it up but I am using a ruler to make sure that they're all right where I need them cool so we take your needle Take out the old thread. I'm going to take one arm's length. So I go like that to my shoulder and chop it. I'm also going to double this over. If you make it too long, it's more likely to get knots on you and then you've got dramas. So it's, I think it takes me about two of these lengths to do all the buttons from memory, maybe three. And the, the last one's for like the last one button. But you don't want to have too much it creates dramas if it's if it's too long the longer it is the more chance of a knot and I hate having to fix knots now I'm gonna wrap that around five times I think that was five and you get like a decent sized knot I don't know if you can see that because it's like skin color on skin color but you get like a big knot that you can see trim off the tail and then I'm gonna grab some buttons now this is how you buy them in the shop um, I actually got all of these off my mum who bought them from a shop that was closing down. So I have a bunch of these tubes with all different coloured buttons. So you're probably going to start seeing a lot more buttons from me. And then you just want to line it up with your mark. I might move them so that they don't fall off. So I'm actually just kind of going to bunch that up so it's on the table so it won't fall off and it's not going to pull. And then I'm going to line up the button and I go through around four times, I think. So we go in and down. And then you line up the buttonholes so they are exactly where you want them to be. So I want my buttonholes to go across. These have only got two buttonholes. If you've got four, you can have them going across or you can make a, an X. That's entirely up to you. And sometimes I can't find the back of the button. So what it helps me to do is I stab somewhere outside of the button so that I can gauge it to come back in. And I know that sounds crazy, but it works for me. Because sometimes I just can't get my bearings on where I'm trying to stab. So that's three. I'm still going to do one more so that it doesn't come off because then that's technically eight layers of thread because I doubled it over. And that's why I double it over so I don't have to sew as much. One, two, three, four. So like that. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to take a little piece of fabric like this and I'm going to wrap around five times. So I'm going to put my finger against the needle and I know you can't see because it's a needle. One, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to pull down, put my thumb on the thread so it can't move, and then pull 
the needle all the way through. And my thumb there that was holding all the thread is holding the knot nice and close to the fabric. And then you can just chop it off and do the same process again. So one, two, three, four, five. Pull the knot down to the end. Trim off any excess. And then we go on to the next one. So I picked a nice standout button to give myself another little accent. Apparently I'm all about accents. I could have also picked like a pale colour that matched this, or I could have pulled one of the colours out of the accent fabric I stuck at the top. So I could have done like a nice grey button. I did have it as an option. I decided I wanted even bolder, which is why I've done maroon. Ah, uh, come on. Where's the inside of the hole? Sometimes I just can't find it. There to there. Doesn't matter how many times I try and line it up, sometimes it just doesn't want to work for me. And I will always go from outside hole to inside hole. That's just a personal thing. You never want to go in and out the same hole on the off chance that you don't grab enough um, fabric in between because then it won't be strong. I'm also kind of tugging on it to making sure it's all the way through. Once you've done two layers, the button won't move anymore. So it's easier to sew the last two. Usually. So one, two, three, four, flip it over, grab a little bit of fabric. One, two, three, four, five. I find six, the knot becomes annoying and tricky. I've decided five is the magic number. And again, you can ignore me. I'm sure there's other ways to tie off buttons, but this is just how I do it. I find it pretty quick. I've already done two in like what? Less than 10 minutes. This part of the video so far is 10 minutes. And that's including marking the buttonholes and then going back and fixing my mistake. So I'm going to go and sew the rest of those on um, and then it will be finished. So you've already seen the, this at the start, so I won't need to show you again. Uh, you can also check your buttons as you go if you want to. So you can come here and do up your buttons like this to make sure that they're all sitting nicely. And you'll notice that the buttons fit perfectly. See? Look at that. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I hope you try it. I really love this dress. I love the blue one. I've already worn it out and about. I don't even go anywhere. It's just, I think it's fabulous. So there you go, guys. I will see you all for the next tutorial. Bye-bye.